communication. So this is actually going to be uh, a few things under the heading of communication. Uh, I'm going to talk about relevancy. Do you have a bunch of different audiences? This is master the conversation topic, um, both to the organization, to management, uh, other departments. Uh, we had a, uh, a mention yesterday, and I'll play a clip about um, kind of speaking the audience, voice of your audience, uh, users and customers. And this is going to sound very basic, these next three, but you'll see when we get to it what to say and communicate, how to say it, and how to do it most effectively. So first, communicating relevancy, which is, I know, a, a huge, huge topic. Um, we just did uh, our most recent tips newsletter that just came out last week, in fact. Um, there was some data from uh, Infotrends. In fact, it was one of the studies they gave at their breakfast yesterday. Uh, talks about supporting channels beyond print, uh, which, you know, we've been talking about that for a while, but there was a statistic in there that I thought was interesting. Uh, that marketing and print materials are number four and five for the communication channels in your organization. So you need to think about what can you do in some of those channels that are, are higher up the food chain, if you will. Uh, automating the largest uh, print applications, that will help them stay inside the organization. Uh, the largest print applications are ID cards, newsletters, brochures, and sell sheets. Uh, and this is from their data. Um, and then some of the other applications like business cards and direct mail are further down the list. And I know a lot of implants are doing business cards uh, and direct mail, but might not be doing some of those other things. I talked to an implant yesterday who's looking to bring ID cards uh, in-house, and they're actually here looking at equipment to do that. Um, one of our customers, Excellus Blue Cloth Blue Shield, brought in um, their ID cards a number of years ago, and the ROI was pretty astounding. And if you think about uh, anybody who's in a HIPAA-compliant situation, you probably want to have that application in-house. Practically provide what's, uh, what's needed to prevent outsourcing. So some of the t these are the top three things that get outsourced. Uh, everybody knows wide format is booming, um, so you're trying to bring in some things that have been uh, outsourced, and it's easier than it's been. You know, a cost of ownership, et cetera, has come down, and, and equipment has gotten so that it's a little easier to do that. Taking ownership of the digital conversation, you know, that's, we're not going to print anymore, so what can we do electronic? You need to be in that conversation and actually own it, if at all possible. Um, this, I thought, was an interesting one, um, and probably one that if you don't work a lot with the marketing department, you might not have given thought to. It's helping the organization increase response rates in action, really working with marketing. Uh, the statistic that I saw from uh, Infotrends was around um, how print and digital together increase response rate and action, uh, the numbers of 2.1 and 1.5. Those might not sound huge. But if you're on a scale, I can tell you that would be a pretty meaningful difference to increase somebody, the response rate of something your organization is doing. And it helps contribute to your relevancy for the organization because you're helping conversion, you're helping sales. Uh, then the last thing, um, which another one that's not probably done as often as it, sh as it should be, is broadcasting your organizational impact and, and tracking your savings. Um, this was something that Blue Valley Schools did. So this is a piece they put together. Uh, they're a school district. Um, they put this together specifically just for an award, uh, highlighting, and they won an award with the uh, IPMA, Implant Printing and Mailing Association. The impact to the organization from some work that they're doing is $1.4 million. For a school district, that's huge. So they've got, gotten recognition from winning the IPMA award. Uh, they got uh, recognition in plant graphics in a couple of different times, and then um, the school board recognized them, the entire print shop, in a, in a particular meeting. Um, they're definitely kind of a shining star, but uh, anything you can do to get publicity and track what you're doing is, is good for you. Okay, a couple other relevancy things. Uh, so speaking in your audience's language. Right there. She said, stop using the word savings. Going forward, you're going to say cost avoidance. She totally threw me for a loop that whole day, but that was a disaster meeting because, you know, every time in my head I had to think of, but since I've started using that word, cost avoidance instead of savings, I get through so, uh, so many meetings, it usually be hours long, I'm actually in meetings for like 15, 20 minutes, and that word, cost avoidance, evidently to them explains that it never was ours to begin with, but savings at one point could have been ours. So that little tip has helped me in a lot of ways, and it actually worked for you. You used it as well, and you went. You said you went right through. We talked uh, three weeks ago on a conference call. I learned that trick. I went, that's got to be too easy. I put that in a proposal last week. I went to my apartment, uh, department finance officer in a day for the proposal. If she takes three weeks to get through emails and meetings and arm wrestling to get that, 
the word, I used the word cost avoidance in my proposal. In a day, she understood what I was talking about. Well, it was pretty powerful, and it was neat to see that work with two people that were on a panel, and somebody used it, and right away it worked. This was from a government implant down in um, Washington, D.C., um, and he did a presentation, actually it was for IP IPMA, and then we blogged about it, about uh, tips for building your ROI and then selling your vision to management. Um, I thought that sort of idea was pretty insightful, um, and sort of selling the picture of what it is you want and preparing management and finance with plans down the road. Uh, and the, one of the fellows in the video there, uh, in addition to having a plan, he also puts the age of the equipment and then the expected life. So when it comes time to replace something, there's no surprises. But the interesting thing is, if somebody says, wow, that should have been replaced three years ago, and we're still using it, that will help you get the dollars, budget dollars that you need to replace equipment or buy software or whatever. So, so definitely, you know, the idea of selling the picture, I think, is a good one for communicating to management. Uh, and then uh, for customers. Don't leave communication to chance. Automate it to ensure it happens. You know, using uh, workflow software or something like web to print uh, that will help you communicate, um, and it helps uh, ensure the customers that you know things are proceeding like they should. You're not doing it manually. It also enables your production team to understand, plan, and adjust because they can see where there's hinks, if that's a word I can use, <laughs> or whether things are going smoothly. Uh, communicating at the right points. Um, again, that assures customers that everything's happening. Uh, and it also lets you sort of answer questions along in the process and think about, well, who else needs to know? Are there more, multiple people that should be communicated with? Um, one that I thought was kind of interesting as a marketer is considering, uh, you know, how you communicate to people uh, and, you know, the fact that you need to be brief and informative. Um, one of the other people that was in that panel, that was actually from um, IPMA this June, talked about how she used to send out emails that were a couple paragraphs long and people people weren't reading them. So she changed her policy and now won't send out anything that's longer than a paragraph. So just, you know, those kind of tips help. Um, online status, same thing. You know, right now communications, that is brief to the point, right where people need it. Um, providing a little extra value. Um, this, some of this comes from one of our tips news, newsletters too. The idea of, you know, saying thank you. Um, people do different things that I've seen with special offers or special papers around the holidays. Um, you know, maybe special notes on shipping labels. All those kind of things help create value, but there's also a personalization factor. Uh, one of the implants I mentioned earlier on their uh, website, they've got uh, a little story and a picture of everybody who works in the print center. And you'd be surprised what a, how that sort of puts a face on the print center. It builds trust, but it's also, oh, hey, I didn't know you were into fishing. You know, that kind of thing. Um, it really helps you build a relationship and, and personalize what you're doing. 